Hi, I'm Mara Marini. I play Nurse Gretchen in the movie you're about to see, Lady Magdalene's. Our movie stars the original Star Trek's Lieutenant Uhura, Nichelle Nichols as Lady Magdalene, Ethan Keough as Agent Jack Goldwater, Susan Smythe as Agent Cynthia Seagate, Claudia Lynx as Scheherazade, Alexander Wraith as Yassin Salim, Saeed Faraj as Jamal Hosni, and Mark Gilvery playing two different roles, and I won't spoil it by telling you which ones. Lady Magdalene's was written and produced right here in Pahrump by Pahrump writer-director J. Neil Shulman. In addition to Neil, who plays Ali the American in the movie, we have the following actors right here from Pahrump. Hope McBain as Sinead, Kiara Rodriguez as Pixie, Angela Rosiak as Senator Red Kensington, Vince Martirano as IRS Deputy Commissioner Louis Heinlein, Ron Chikorosky as Attorney Mark Allred, Andrew Alberti as Dr. Samuel Weber, Joanne Alberti as Kitty Weber, Tommy Murphy as FBI Special Agent Thomas McGuire, Alvin Jones as Barry Spanker, Anessa Pasternak Slaughter, Elisa Arias, Dan Devine, Michael Paul Galagos, and Joe Willett as the cast of The Barry Spanker Show, and Tom Slaughter as, well, Tom Slaughter. Our movie used Pahrump locations both inside and outside of the Pahrump Nugget Hotel and Gambling Hall, inside the Nye County Courthouse, at the Desert View Medical Center, outside the winery and symphony restaurant, and our movie magic turned Alice and Jim Eichner's house into the main interior location of Lady Magdalene's. We also shot our action sequences at front side resorts and training centers, trained our cameras on Las Vegas locations including McCarran Airport, the Federal Courthouse, the FBI Field Office, and Interstate 15. Oh yeah, before we even started, Neil and some friends shot footage from a helicopter overlooking Hoover Dam and also shot some home movies at Hoover Dam when nobody was looking. Good luck figuring out what was shot at Hoover Dam and what was shot at Front Sight. Even one of the producers of Transformers couldn't figure that one out. Lady Magdalene's introduces 10 original songs on its soundtrack, including two written by Nichelle Nichols. In showings at film festivals, Lady Magdalene's has picked up awards for Best Cutting Edge Film, Audience Choice, and a special jury prize for Libertarian Ideals. My own experience working on Lady Magdalene's was so much fun. The cast and crew were wonderful. All of the locals were so much fun and wonderful to be around, and everyone was great to work with. It was just a wonderful experience. Neil was a great director. It was a great, great time. <laughs> Pahrump, Nevada is a town that likes to style itself as the New Old West. Casino gambling is legal, liquor stores are open 24 hours, and just across the town's borders are two houses of legal prostitution. But Pahrump just got a third brothel, only this one exists on the sets of Lady Magdalene's, a new movie currently being shot there. Lady Magdalene stars Star Trek icon Nichelle Nichols in the title role as the madam of a little brothel trying to make it out of tax receivership. To do that, Lady Magdalene brings her working girls out to the parking lot of the Prump Nug Casino and Gambling Hall as her backup singers for a rousing gospel song telling the story of Rahab, the Old Testament prostitute who helped Joshua win the Battle of Jericho. Nichelle Nichols is no stranger to music, having sung with Duke Ellington long before she flew into the final frontier and having been lauded by Parisian music critics as the next Josephine Baker. Prump residents were divided on participating in a movie that combines Bible lessons and prostitution. One high school band scheduled to participate in the musical number took one look at the shooting set and loaded back on their bus for a hasty retreat. But others accepted Nichelle Nichols' promise that Lady Magdalene's was family friendly and joined in the music with choruses of Praise the Lord and Tell It, Sister. This is Ron Chekorowski reporting from Toronto. The city was due for a fall, so he spoke to his army, said, let's get them all. Lord and Lord and Lord and Lord. Magdalena's is a movie that was written, produced, and uh, directed by my friend <laughs> uh, J. Neal um, Schulman, and we're very excited to have been uh, asked to be part of the uh, uh, film festival. Lady Magdalene is uh, the owner of Lady Magdalene's. She's from um, New Orleans and was... Um, 
uh, uh, had a brothel in New Orleans until uh, Rita and Katrina, you know, kind of <laughs> flooded her out, and she picked up her operation and moved to Pahrump, Nevada. <laughs> and, and I love saying that, Pahrump. Now, it really isn't about a brothel. <laughs> well, the writer, producer, director, J. Neil Schulman, is really a fine writer. Reading. I took one look at Lady Magdalene. I said, this is the one you should go with first. <laughs> uh, because it's fun, it's a comedy. Well, yes. I, came, I came on board not only to star in the, in the role as uh, Lady Magdalene, but uh, as um, executive producer. And so um, with Neil, I began to have a hands-on uh, beyond just the, the um, the character, and I said, I'm already singing two songs in the in the movie. One that he wrote called the Harlot. Rahab the Harlot, <laughs> and uh, and that's a funny weather. It's we, a great song. Yeah, yeah. And we do an early Sunday morning church. <laughs> uh, there there are some wonderfully talented uh, young people. Um, in the in the film, um, as, and and there are a lot of, of twists and turns in it. Just when you think it's going this way, it, it jags, and and uh, without losing a step, it's still on the same story. But what you thought was is going that way, and so you got to go that way with it. You know. Yes. And here, this was our first uh, uh, showing, and we've had some screening, private screenings, and. Um, and uh, the San Diego Black Film Festival, and now Backlot, which is, you know, very, very prestigious. And, and I, I'm really delighted, delighted. A lot of, of um, celebrities are coming to, to it, and a lot of, just lots of friends are getting calls like crazy. And I'm just, I'm very, very excited. Now, we met just today about an hour and a half ago, right. so, uh, and one of the reasons we have you here is to talk about the fact that you're going to have a casting call. That's right. Uh, Saturday, Saturday morning, 9 a.m., we're, uh, we're having an open casting call for both speaking and non-speaking roles at the uh, Pahrump Nugget. Now, uh, Mark, you're going to play a villain. Yeah, the director of uh, Al-Qaeda, and um, you could say he's based quite substantially on someone uh, everybody, everybody's familiar with. From 9-11. Uh, from 9-11, yeah. Hmm. Osama bin Laden. So have you got a character that's going to play? Is that who you're playing? That's who I'm playing, believe it or not. Really? Right. When, the, when this gentleman offered me the role at first, uh, I said to him, are you serious? But uh, I've been working on uh, an Arabic accent and um, it's, at the moment I'm actually working on some dialogue that I will have to speak in actual Arabic. Yeah. I mean, your, yeah. your facial features are close. Yeah. yeah sure. A yeah. few people have actually said that, but yeah. and, and, I, and s since then I've looked, and, and there are sort of similarities, yeah. As a matter of fact, could we make a call to the FBI? We need to check yeah. this guy out. Yeah. Doing public, yeah, uh, you know, there might be people hunting me down at the end of the Well, listen, week. We, we, we've had some interesting encounters yeah. with, uh, with Homeland Security on this, because we applied for, uh, to, uh, we sent our script over to Homeland Security to see if they would cooperate in, uh, in, in making this movie. And uh, we got back a letter basically saying, not only are we not going to cooperate in this movie, I guess they didn't like the idea of having a, a brothel, you know, uh, associated with, uh, with mm -hmm. Homeland Security agents, mm -hmm. not only, but we don't want you to use any of our visual insignia. And, you know, of course, that's a whole First Amendment issue and got, you know, got us a lot of publicity uh, in, the, uh, in the entertainment trades, in the, in the movie trades. And so uh, about a week after uh, we got turned down uh, by the Department of Homeland Security uh, by uh, somebody in their press office, it turned out that the guy in the press office who turned us down was arrested uh, for soliciting sex with an underage uh, uh, girl who was actually a, a, a f another federal agent from another agency, uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, pretending to be an underage girl, and he was he was arrested and taken off in handcuffs uh, for <laughs> for that. So I guess I, I guess the Homeland Security Department, or at least this particular gen uh, gentleman, uh, had a problem with legal sex with with women who are of, of age, and that's why he turned us down.
My name is Tony DiCiaccio. My name is Phyllis Lazo. My name is Renita Gibbler. Amber Harrell. My name is Joey Harrell. Edward E. Phillips. Rolf Gonsenbach. Michael Berkentis. My name is Dan Wyman. My name is uh, Shirley Barlow. My name is uh, Michael Moraglia. My name is Don Schroy. I'm Janet Errett. I'm Rodney Camacho. Ron Whitman, W-I-T-M-A-N. My name is Rick Flora. Uh, my name is Larry Baker. And then my name is Sally Devlin. My name is Mark Bonstein. My name is Aaron Kidd. My name is Christine Ann Smith. My name is Sheila Schmidt. I am Micah Schmidt. I'm Courtney Carter. Stephanie Parisi. Um, my name is Joanna Marshall. I'm Mrs. Firetruck, Lillian oh. Flores. I'm Michael Anderson. Hi, my name is Jay Sophia Lakopoulos. I am Peter Lakopoulos. Hi, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Vince Martorano. I'm number six. Well, I'm a member of the Screen Actors Guild, Actors, Actors Equity, and uh, after your Jewish and your parents immigrated to the United States from British Palestine. You yourself lived in Israel for three years and married a Sabra. You're fluent in Hebrew, Arabic, and Farsi. After the Navy, you took dual master's degrees in forensic science and forensic accounting. I have no doubt that with your commendations for field work, letters of recommendation, both from me and your supervisor at FAM, Mossad will take you on in a heartbeat. Hell, Homeland Security would grab you if your face hadn't been on the front page of the New York Post. All right, Mr. Yes, you signed my name is Andy Alberti. My number is 10. Yeah, or 01, depending on how you look at it. All right, Andy. Um, uh, I guess we've talked before, so I know that you've never acted before. But uh, tell me a little bit about your professional experience in front of the camera. Well, as a boy, I was in a lot of high school plays. I've been a, an aircraft uh, crew chief. Uh, I've run my own businesses in hydraulics and pneumatics. I've been in politics. I've been on a school board. I've been in the Republican Central Committee in Orange County. I've done public speaking at high schools. Uh, I'm a real estate broker in California and Nevada. And uh, life is good. Okay. All right. Well, we have some lovely page. Could you read for me, please? So let me get this straight, Agent Goldwater. All it took for you to conclude that an Arabic looking man was an Al Qaeda terrorist was that he was carrying a violin case and that he already cleared airport security and that he was watching a Tom Clancy movie? And we're not supposed to think that you had racially profiled this innocent performing artist, who by the way is a UCLA graduate from the moment you set eyes on him? That was a great audition. I really liked that. Good. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Can you come up and walk to the exit? Hello, my name is Kiara Rodriguez. I have had no um, experience in film. And how come you not have slates over the Huh? And how come you not have slates over the game? Do you have any commercials? No. Okay, have you had, do you have any acting experience? No, I took an acting class once, but not really. Okay. Did you ever take like, a commercial acting workshop or something like that? No, sir. Okay, well, you just came here and did it naturally. No. Okay. Uh, all right, what brought you here today? Um, my stepdad told me about it, and so I figured I'd try. Okay. Uh, acting is an ambition of yours? I would like to. I would like to model. But I would actually like to sing. But you sing? Yeah. What sort of style do you sing? Um, a little R&B. A little R&B? Yeah. Anything you want to, uh, you want to can do a little something for you? No, okay. I'm sure. Curious. Okay. Can you read for me, please? So let me get this straight, Agent Goldwater. All it took for you to conclude that an arabic looking man was an al-Qaeda terrorist was that he was carrying a violin case that had already cleared airport security and that he was watching a Tom Clancy movie? And we're not supposed to think that this innocent, that you racially profiled this innocent performing artist who, by the way, is a UCL graduate from the moment you set eyes on him? Um, if you were just talking to one of your girlfriends or something like that, just talk to me if I was one of your girlfriends from your gospel on the telephone. 
Okay. You, no, I'm not talking about oh. this. Just, you know, the dual, you know, is it fair you're chatting on the phone with your girlfriend or something? What are you saying? Um, I don't know. You never really talk about TV shows, I guess. You talk about TV shows? Yeah, I don't know. What do you talk about? I love saying, well, what TV shows do you watch? Um, All My Children. You, you're, you're into All My Children? Yeah, I love All My Children. All right, tell me a little bit about the last episode you saw All My Children. Last episode, uh, Kendall, she's in a coma right now, and she's trying to, cause she's pregnant right now, and um, the thing is, sh sh let's see, okay. she's pregnant, and they have to decide whether to save her life or save the baby's life, and she's no one knows what she wants to do because before that, before she got in the coma, everybody thought she didn't want to have the child, so now everybody's trying to save her instead of the child, but she doesn't want that, and then Jr. He's um, coming to terms with his mom coming back from the dead, and Babes, who is her, um, Jr.'s um, wife, is trying to like help him through his situation because he he tried to kill her, and that's why Kendall's in the coma. Basically. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Oh, right here. Yeah. Set. All right, can you walk to the edge, please? Now, you look, you look like you're the right age range to remember when I say, Mr. Guest, can you sign in, please? Yeah, what's my line? Yeah, very good. Dorothy Kilgallen and a few other people. Right. Uh, I think and maybe I had the hots for Dorothy Kilgallen. <laughs> can you start by uh, giving me your name and number, please? Sure. Uh, my number is 22. Uh, my name is Roski, and uh, I... Uh, I'm uh, enjoying the opportunity. Okay. you have any acting experience? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I, uh, Focus on the reporting. Okay. Uh, I, had, I have uh, done some commercials. I, in the 80s, I did some TV commercials for uh, uh, a lady named Sandy Zimmerman in Las Vegas. She had uh, a TV show called the Las Vegas Today Show. And uh, from there, we had done some commercials. She also produced some commercials. So I was uh, an announcer. Grip, stage hand, jack of all trades for her show, as well as we did some things that were aired on Fox 5. Can you repeat one more time? Faster and more intense. Okay. More aggressive. Okay. Uh. So let me get this trade, Agent Goldwater. All it took you to conclude that this Arab looking gentleman was, a, was an Al Qaeda terrorist was that he was carrying a violin case that already passed security and that he was watching a Tom Clancy movie. And, and we're supposed to think that you didn't racially profile this, this performing artist who is, by the way, UCLA graduate from the moment you set eyes on him. That was very good. Okay? Um, you definitely want to allow, uh, what people talk about, so make sure that we have all your information outside. That was excellent. Thank you. Are you the director, sir? I am. My name is Angela Rossick. My number is 31. Okay, I suspect that. <laughs> Angela, do you have any uh, Yes, actually, I have done stage plays before musicals. Uh, I was in MAME. Uh, funny thing happened on the way to the forum. Scapino. Uh, Don't Drink the Water. I was in that one also. All right, uh, what did you say in MAME? I was in the chorus in MAME, but I did have a, a bit part. I walked across the stage uh, as the singer. Oh, uh, Is there anything you oh, let's see. Gosh, that was 20 some years ago. <laughs> oh, let's see. I know, I remember Cabaret. I was, I was leading Cabaret. Okay. What good is sitting alone in your room? Come hear the music play. Life is a cabaret, old chum. Come to the cabaret. So let me get this straight, Agent Goldwater. All it took for you to conclude that this Arabic-looking man was an Al-Qaeda terrorist was the fact that he was carrying a violin case, which, by the way, was cleared through airport security, and he was watching a Tom Clancy movie. And we're not supposed to think that you racially profiled this innocent performing artist, who, by the way, is a graduate of UCLA, from the moment you set eyes on him. That was excellent. Angela, that was really, really good. Thank you. Okay. 
Well, we know where to find you. We don't have to go looking for you. Yep, you got my number. <laughs> thank you so much. Not a problem. Thank you. This always works. Absolutely, it always works. But I, I train a lot, so I train my family. So it's whatever you want to do, okay? All right, one more time. This is not an actress. This is an actual trainer at Frontsite Nevada. Okay. Actually, you can just put in an empty magazine and run the slide to the rear. So it's just always an opportunity for me to run that slide and work that slide on. Okay. So we'll trip our trigger. Now we'll have you point it. Hard focus on the front sight. Press. Dead trigger. Look and move. Now let's say that magazine doesn't come out. Okay? We'll come out. We'll access the fresh magazine. As we come up, it's not dropping. It's not dropping. So I'll take that pinky finger. Press that slide release. Strip it out. And the new one. Put that slide on home. Just like that. Good shot here. There you go. Okay, let me uh, zoom in on you. Excellent. Perfect. Thank you. Could you do that draw again? Huh? Yes. Perfect. Thank you so much. We hooked the student up on a trolley. They zip down the zip line. It's a gravity brake system, so they come to rest just by gravity. We lift the scissors lift, pluck them off the line, send the next one. So that's, again, the zip line stuff. And that's something that's safe enough that we can put our actors on without having to worry about stunt doubles. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, your actors won't have any problem with that. We send children and grandmothers off all the time. Great. The world-famous chicken ranch in Pahrump, Nevada is the model for our fictitious Lady Magdalene's, and its manager invited us in to do location shooting. In an average week, the chicken ranch has between half a dozen and a dozen women, and this is their home. Our star, Nichelle Nichols, will be premiering a brand new 1930s style big band song in Lady Magdalene's, Rahab the Harlot. Daniel May, who you're hearing perform this song, is the film composer for Lady Magdalene's. However, I wrote this song. This is the story of an ancient starlet. Her name was Rahab and she was a harlot. She lived in Jericho, her digs on the wall But when it came time for husbands, she had them all Rahab, the Jericho beauty Rahab, she knew her duty Rahab, the one with the bot But when it came to the point 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 when it came to the point, she gave her faith to our God. You're working on this film. Where yeah, we're you should have a title come up with our names on it. Down here. That will be done in the post. Okay, okay. And then over here, Alexander. Alexander. Ethan Ander. You know, he just booked the role of the newspaper boy. Spider-Man 3. This no guy's going to be huge. I'm on He's deck. got this line. It goes like this. <coughs> what was that? <coughs> Just more like it. <coughs> Spider-Man. <coughs> I play Agent uh, Jack Goldwater in the film, which is a uh, really fun role because he's, uh, he's a federal air marshal turned uh, IRS agent turned uh, adjunct brothel manager. Uh, it's a bit of a fish out of water story, really, as I see it. Um, he's a guy who's, you know, trained all his life to be in law enforcement and uh, 
he's kind of thrown into this position where he's uh, expected to um, run a brothel, which is uh, not something I think that most law enforcement people tend to think about. Uh, have you had any interesting experiences or difficulties considering we're filming out here in the desert? You know, it's like most days, 112 degrees. I got up, uh, I got up to go for a run uh, yesterday morning. <clears throat> My call time was 6 a.m. or something. I got up to go for a run. It was like five o'clock in the morning, and the sun's just peeking out. And uh, I go to my car to get my um, my uh, my wet watch, and uh, and it's like 96 degrees at like five o'clock in the morning, and the sun's not even out yet. It's like a little a little too hot for me. But it's great. I mean, it's great getting to work with uh, Nichelle Nichols. I'm a I'm a big nerd. I grew up watching Star Trek. I still watch Star Trek, and um, I was doing a scene yesterday with Michelle, uh, and, and and all that was supposed to happen in, in the scene is that we we're supposed to be sitting there listening, and uh, she started to improv this dialogue, and and uh, at one point went went for to get us a drink, and she came out and she said, uh, "This is the best stuff I have. This is Saurian brandy." I was like, "Yes." The Saurian brandy. I'm drinking Saurian brandy with Michelle Nichols. Nothing could be more awesome. Not many people can say that. I don't know anyone else who can say that. I'm the only one I know. Uh, so I feel lucky. Quite lucky. Hi, my name's Michelle Redmond. I am from Las Vegas here. I go by the name of Eden. And I have a little bit of a different involvement in this movie than the rest of the actors because I actually am a licensed legal working girl in the state of Nevada and I am one of the consultants that Neil worked with um, in his research and learning about the brothel business and how things work. Um, I was working at the Chicken Ranch in Pahrump which is a legal brothel and um, Neil came in and wanted to talk to several of us, wanted to know if there were any volunteers that would be willing to speak to him about the industry from the inside and maybe give him some interesting scenarios and talk about some things that have happened. Uh, and uh, we actually had a good time talking with him and uh, spending several months with him while he was doing this research. So uh, I had, didn't hear from him for a while and one day he called me up and said, "Hey." I am going to go ahead and do this movie that I was working on. Would you be interested in being part of it? And I thought, wow, that's kind of interesting. And uh, so he told me that they were casting for several of the parts, and he wanted to know if I'd be interested in playing myself, that he had written the actual character of Eden into the script. And the character basically was based on me. So I thought, wow, that's, that's quite interesting. I, I would love to play myself. I just hope I do a good job. <laughs> So, um, let me see what I can tell you about myself. I am from Louisville, Kentucky. I've been out in Vegas for several years, and I have been a legal working girl in the state of Nevada for almost four years. I absolutely love it. It's an amazing experience. And uh, I currently am working at the Bunny Ranch in Carson City, and I am one of the girls that's in the TV show Cat House on HBO. I have... Uh, not a whole lot of professional film experience in this aspect, but I'm a porn girl. So being in front of the camera is not an issue to me, and this is actually quite simple compared to what I'm used to doing. So uh, it, it's been a very interesting challenge, and it's been quite a learning experience. I wouldn't have changed a thing. What are you doing? How hot is this girl? How hot is this girl right now? <laughs> Star of the movie. J. Neil Shulman. Genius or madman? I think the answer is yes. Now, you probably aren't as familiar with my thespic work as you are with my written work. Of course, I conceived and co-wrote Liar Liar, starring Jim Carrey. I co-wrote The Little Rascals. I co-wrote Heartbreakers. And now, I'm in Pahrump, squinting into a video camera, talking about my experiences on Lady Magdalene's. This is a one-of-a-kind film, because the sequel hasn't been written yet. I have nothing else to say. How's it going? My name is Alexander Wraith and I'm playing a scene. In this movie you did uh, some of your own stunts. Uh, All of my own stunts. 
Okay. All. Describe some of the ones that you did. Okay. I jumped out of a tunnel with a. Um, I was attached by dental floss to these bags, and my friend Joe um, held me up. Uh, I'm just wondering if you realize that uh, when you're doing the car stunts, yeah, that the uh, right front tire of that car, either because of what you were doing or maybe beforehand, yeah, it was grossly underinflated. And if you had done that stunt a couple more times, it probably would have come off the rim and you would have rolled the car. But that would have been part of the film. <laughs> so describe the uh, zipline sequence. Oh, the zipline sequence uh, where I almost got killed, that part? Where it got tangled? I, yeah, was there more than one? <laughs> oh, yeah. I almost got killed because um, what happened was we got stuck because we were connected together. We got stuck, we got tangled up, we were going down, we were screaming and yelling. It was, it was nuts. You guys are going to like it. I think we'll be on the outtakes. I'm here with writer, director, producer, and actor, J. Neil Shulman. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Mara. Could you tell us a little bit about your experience on working on Lady Magdalene? What was your favorite moment or? Well, I have, to, I have to say, I've never been a crack addict, but I imagine uh, that making movies is an addiction worse than crack. Um, it's just a peak experience. Uh, it in, uh, making a movie is, has so many different elements that have to come together, and so many different creative challenges. Uh, it's really very, very satisfying when you manage to, uh, to do things you've never done before. This was my first time directing a movie. It was my uh, first time uh, in post-production editing a movie. And what I, what I really discovered on this film is that everything's backwards. Uh, you know, I started out as a screenwriter, and I thought that, that, that writing a screenplay is what makes the movie. Well, it isn't. Uh, the authoring of the movie, I've, al I've also been a novelist and, and short story writer. As, as a filmmaker, I discovered that what felt most like writing a novel was what we do in the editing bay, the, the, the cutting together of the movie in the post-production. And what you learn in post-production is what you as a director fail to do when you're on the set, fail to deliver to the guys in the editing bay. And as a director, you really find out what the screenwriter failed to give you when you actually have to be on the shooting set. So everything is backwards. You know, uh, the authoring happens in, in, in the editing bay, and the, when you have that experience, that lets you know for the next time uh, what you need to do as a director, which lets you know for the next time what you need to do as a screenwriter. Thank you so much for being with us today. This was so great to finally interview you. And that's a wrap. Mongol, so it was really no problem. Yeah. We had uh, Samurai Zen Pain Control with us. All good to go. But listen, watch this movie. You guys will freaking love it. Watch it. Watch the movie. Watch the movie. Watch the movie if you ever see it. And what was the name of that movie? Oh. Here is our suspense comedy, Lady Magdalene's. We hope you enjoy watching it as much as we enjoyed making it.